opening statement, then we'll go to our radio crew. Yeah, I give a lot of credit to uh, Prairie View. I thought their, their kids played really hard, competed, um, you know, didn't didn't let a double digit deficit get them down. They, they just kept on swinging and, and, and uh, you know, it's what we saw on film. I thought they just uh, they have a very quick team. They, they play really hard, a little frenetic at times. I thought the one positive thing that we did was uh, kept our turnovers uh, to 11, which, you know, at one point early in the game, we already had six. So to, to go like the last 32 minutes or so with uh, just five turnovers was a positive. You know, a lot of negatives, too. Uh, we got a, <laughs> a lot of young players that sometimes have to learn lessons the hard way and, uh, you know, just sort of sense before the game that, you know, our readiness wasn't what it needed to be. And, you know, that's on all of us, um, coaches, players that are playing, players that are hurt, all of us. Uh, and so, um, you know, we're shorthanded. And so there's a little fatigue factor, but, you know, the body will do what the mind tells it. And sometimes, you know, our mind drifts because we're a little too young, um, you know, and, and can't learn on the bench. Unfortunately, you have to learn the, the lesson sometimes on the floor. But be that as it may, you know, we're, we're happy that we won. And uh, we know we have an incredible opponent um, with a lot of talent coming in on Tuesday. Chris, you talked about the mental side of it. Was it th just that simple in terms of getting their heads right? Because the game turned completely around. Is there anything else you can point to that got it back on the rails? Well, again, I, I thought early on we turned the ball over a little bit. You know, we knew that they were going to be antsy in passing lanes. Uh, we knew that they do a really good job of flocking to the ball. And I thought we settled. Like when we didn't turn the ball over, uh, we settled for three-point shots. You know, I think at one point, you know, we had taken like, um, you know, six shots. We were one for six, and we'd already taken three threes. And, um, you know, our team's not the three-point shooting team that we were a year ago. Uh, so we we got to be able to get the ball in the paint. You know, you look at the second half, and we were in the bonus in the first four minutes of the uh, of the second half, and that's because we were trying to pound it in the lane. We took our time, and uh, the game changes when you get a team in foul trouble. And although I think we could have taken advantage of even even more than we did, we still shot 21 free throws in the second half. So um, settling down on offense. You know, not settling for threes, not turning the ball over, probably changed the game a little bit. Uh, you know, I don't think that we were great defensively, uh, really the entire game, but uh, give their kids some credit. Let's talk specifically about a couple of individual guys. Easily, I think, David Johnson's best game. You put the ball in his hands more. You were posting him up some. I saw that by design. Was that a conscious decision going into the game or just as the game evolved? Well, uh, you know, they were making Carleek's touches uh, pretty tough. That's the luxury, Bob, of having two guys that, that are really good with the ball. You know, David, when he slows down, um, you know, he's so much of a better player. He's so much more effective. And, you know, he, he still has those good moments, poor moments. And, you know, as a sophomore, man, I'm expecting, you know, way more good mo moments and way more consistency. And uh, I know he's expecting that, but, you know, Prairie View really tries to speed you up, as, as, as you saw, really tries to speed you up. And the majority of teams that we play, you know, aren't that frenetic, aren't that challenging in the passing lanes and, you know, quick to double. And, and so uh, regardless, Dave's got to play slow and composed against teams like Prairie View. Uh, but I thought when he was good, whether it was posting, whether it was getting to into the lane and, you know, just rising up and using his size, he was really good. But, you know, a couple – Couple turnovers and and uh, a few errant plays because he was sped up. We got we got to get him to slow the game down a little bit more, especially against frenetic teams. But he did uh, overall much better. He settled in as time went on. As you point out, sometimes you can't tell just by a stat sheet. You know, certainly from a coach's point of view, if you're pleased or not. Were you pleased with Jalen Withers because he certainly put an impressive stat line up there? What'd you make of his play? Did a really good job, Bob, of finishing around the basket. Um, you know, whether it was on dump offs, uh, you know, he he was around the rim, uh, did a really good job of catching passes in traffic and finishing. Uh, you know, he ends up going to the line, you know, free throw line five times. And, uh, 
you know, much more engaged and much more ready on the offensive end. You know, defensively, we were switching so many things. I thought the ball was in the lane way, way too much. We've got to be able to not just Jalen, but every guy stay big, stay in the play and do it without fouling. And, you know, no, none of our big guys did a, did a the job that we need him to do and hopefully a lesson learned, Bob. But Jalen played much better tonight in the last two games, and, and quite honestly, we needed him because a few of his counterparts didn't play as well. How about one last comment? What about um, when you played without Carleek because he's been so dominant for you, and you talk about the fatigue factor. Were you consciously trying to get him a rest, and how do you think you played when he wasn't on the floor? Yeah, so you know, we, we literally, as you know, we have <laughs> – we have three perimeter players that are true perimeter players that are healthy. And that's not good because usually your one, two, and three play on the perimeter uh, unless you're playing some type of convoluted triangle, uh, big man game. So for the coaching staff, we felt like it was important early in the game. We were going to put JJ in for one of the three perimeter players, Dre, Dave, or Carleek, and move, move Quinn over to the three just so we had uh, some more guard inventory on the bench to start subbing guards out. And, um, you know, it was what it was. We feel comfortable with Dave being at the point. He played that position, you know, primarily last year. You know, five games in however many days, 9, 10, 11 days, whatever the, the stretch is, um, you know, we, we need him to be able to play all five. Going now to questions first from Shannon and then Pat. You touched on uh, having a lot of youthfulness and that playing into the exactly. today. Um, the first question. Having so many uh, teams in your coaching experience that may have had some youth like this before, what does it kind of take what to get guys to be ready from the start in the way that you want them to be? Well, I think it, it, it takes a it takes all of us. You know, it takes the coaching staff. It takes it takes every player on the team. You know, walk ons. Um, it takes uh, the guys that are injured. You know, I just thought we had a a little bit of a too cool approach. Shannon just, you know, and we have a lot of young guys. You know, we have a lot of sophomores that didn't play last year. You know, we have a lot of freshmen. We have a lot of guys injured for the very first time in their career. And so it's sort of easy to look up in the stands and smile. Like, we need, we need everybody to be locked in. And, um, you know, I... And I thought Prairie View played their tails off. Byron did a really good job with his team being prepared and being ready. Uh, but, you know, maybe we looked at the front of their jersey um, and thought we, we can just play, you know, cool. And cool, cool doesn't win. Cool doesn't win. It doesn't win games. Um, and so hopefully it's a lesson learned from for, for our young guys and for our entire team and our entire coaching staff. But, uh, you know, we thought we were prepared. We knew what they were going to run. We knew they were going to play hard. Uh, and we didn't set the tone the right way. To Pat. Coach was wondering if you could uh, potentially provide a, uh, a status on Samuel Williamson's injury, A, and B, maybe uh, Charles Menlin and uh, some of the other guys as well. Yeah, so Sam dislocated his big toe. Um, and, uh, you know, he is day-to-day. You know, it's like if you dislocate a finger, you just pop that sucker back in, tape it together the next with the next finger, and you're ready to go. Unfortunately, you can't do that with a big toe. Um, but he is day to day. You know, the, the, the next morning, this morning, I should say, or yesterday morning, uh, woke up and wasn't in a lot of pain. There wasn't a whole lot of swelling, a little bit of bruising, which is a good sign. So, you know, he's going to be listed as day to day. And, um, you know, Sam's a tough kid and he'll play when he's ready. Uh, you know, Charles is sort of, He's too far away for me to say, like, um, hey, we're, we're expecting him, you know, any game now. You know, the original diagnosis, I don't know when he uh, was, was injured, the exact date, but we said six weeks from then, and uh, that was a minimum. So we'll see where he is when that timeline comes up. But, you know, obviously won't play in the bubble, and as we get further into December, we'll worry about when Charles comes back. Back to Pat. Uh, what about uh, Josh Nickelberry? Yeah, Josh is, uh, you know, he's frustrated with, with you know, just dealing with uh, the ramifications of, a, you know, arthroscopic surgery. You know, some guys are good to go, you know, after four to six weeks. Some guys, you know, their body heals a little differently. And, you know, um, Josh is uh, one of those guys right now. He's doing everything he can in the 
training room. I feel like I have the best trainer in the country. I got a busy one at that. I know that. But, uh, you know, I, I can't tell you specifically when we expect Josh back. I don't feel like he's going to play, uh, you know, during our time here in the bubble. So, uh, you know, we have to worry about the guys that are they're healthy enough to play. But he's doing everything he can to get back. Go to Shannon and then Russ. We got an announcement late tonight that um, the nightcap Winthrop and UNC Greensboro uh, wasn't happening because of COVID concerns. Do you know if uh, this will affect your game against UNCG later next week? I don't believe it will, Shannon. You know, I think that's why, um, you know, that's why they, they postponed the game. You know, obviously North Carolina and South Carolina are fairly close and they may be able to figure out when they can replay it um, if it's not going to be played during Bubble. I really don't know. I just got off the court and I, I just found out that it was postponed. So, um, but from my understanding, that won't have any effect on our game against UNCG. Just to interject there, the coach is accurate there. Um, they do continue to plan uh, to play the rest of their schedule here in Louisville, as does Winthrop. Uh, we'll go to Russ. Chris, a couple things about your next game. Western Kentucky's played three games and looked impressive in a variety of ways in all three games. I uh, wonder if I could get your uh, assessment of them. And also, secondly, Bassey, uh, he's gotten off to a really good start in the kind of problems he poses. Sure. Well, I mean, you know, they're a good team. <laughs> they're, they've got a lot of talented players. Coach Stansberry, um, you know, changes some things up defensively. You know, they've got some really good playmakers. Um, they've added some shooting with the Davidson transfer. Um, you know, I, I tried to do my best over the offseason to talk Charles into, you know, moving on to the NBA, but he wouldn't do it. And so uh, we're going to have to contend with one of the best front court players in the entire country on Tuesday night. So um, if we rebound like we did tonight, you know, we'll look like Gulliver's Travels, you know, all the Lilliputians around the basketball when, when he's, you know, metal eating around the rim. So. He's really good. We saw that last year with two of our experienced post players and Malik and, and Steve. And, you know, I, I don't see those guys on our bench right now. So we, we're going to have to do it with some young guys and figure out a way. With that, we'll close it out for Coach. Thank you, Coach. Uh, Thank we'll you. We'll be back with David Johnson and Jalen Withers.